Steelers had an overtime game earlier this year. They beat the Seahawks 23-20. Lions haven't had an overtime since 2019. None this season. They've had some close games. Trying to win their first game. Came in 0-8. Steelers trying to win their fifth straight game. And the 51-yard field goal to tie late. Boswell kicking off. Igwe Bikwe has a touchdown run of 42 yards in this game on the return across the 25-yard line. Last time the Lions beat the Steelers, remember the Thanksgiving coin flip game? Call it plays in the air. Head is the call. He said head, it is a tail. Ninety-eight. Overtime rules were different, but the Lions ended up winning 19 to 60. Remember, that was Phil Luckett. He heard it his tail. The Lions won the toss, got the ball, kicked the game-winning goal in the first drive. Ten minutes here, a touchdown wins it for the Lions. A defensive touchdown wins it for the Steelers. Or any scoring by the defense. Goff to throw, middle of the field. Amon Ross St. Brown up the sideline. In Steeler territory to the 45 of Pittsburgh. Well, there was one of the plays that we were thinking we were going to see all game long. They bring in Amon Ross St. Brown, put him in kind of a blocking position right here. They've been running it. There's Jason Cabinda, fullback. Good personnel, good look to expect run, and they get a little play action pass right there for a big game. A pickup of 30 yards. That's almost the entire total that Jared Goff has thrown for in this game prior to that. Again, the leading receiver for the Lions coming in. Tight end T.J. Hawkinson is without a catch. DeAndre Swift is the back. He has the football, navigating his way to the 41 of the Steelers. The Steeler wins this year by a total of 19 points. That's how close their games have been played. In fact, during their four-game win streak, all one-score games. And Mike Tomlin... Figures this will be that way. On a second down seven. The crowd has chilled. They'll be fired up in a moment. There's Cameron Hayward. Swift. Squirms to the 41 and is shoved backwards. Well, one of the big changes in this game has been the injury to Matt Nelson. Matt Nelson, who started at right tackle. Taylor Decker comes back into the lineup. They kick Penny Sewell back to right tackle. But they were using Matt Nelson as that extra tight end, running the ball effectively out of that personnel group. We haven't been able to see a lot. We'll hold it now. Number 69 is starting to play that Matt Nelson role a little bit here in overtime. Third down and seven. Jamal Williams inactive coming in. Jamar Jefferson, the rookie, had a touchdown run but got hurt out for the rest of the game. So the Lions are down to just two halfbacks and one fullback. And Goff almost walked into a sack. He's going to be brought down by Hayward, and there's a flag. Yeah, there may be. It's either a hold or a face mask, the way the official is indicating. There's a big, big difference between which one it's going to be. Holding. And Will Holden got caught hold Holden. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Loss of nine on the play. Yeah, I think that's going to be Taylor yeah. Decker coming off. Yeah, it was Taylor Decker who is back his first game the season. Remember, he had that finger surgery and. You see, that thought, that's what looked like it may have been a face mask, but there wasn't really a grip by Highsmith. Lions forced to punt. Fox, a high boot. Fair catch called for. It's going to bounce and be down inside the 20. We'll check that exact spot where the Steeler offense will have an opportunity to win the game with a field goal. Well, the opening drive, James Washington from Mason Rudolph, and it was 7-0 Steelers. The rookie I mentioned, Jefferson, but after this touchdown, he was injured and out the rest of the game. Igwe Bikwe, a 42-yard touchdown run, but that missed extra point by Santoso. Yeah, that, that's been the difference in getting us here to overtime, and the Steelers came back at 16-10 and got two field goals from Chris Boswell. That 51-yarder tied it, and the Steeler defense adjusted and shut down the Lion run game. 
in that fourth quarter. High snap for Rudolph. Harris. And he'll fall forward to the 19-yard line. Boy, we've had a couple of those here in the course of the game. Mason Rudolph's done a nice job. Kendrick Green, that rookie first-round pick at center, has sailed a couple of them just like that. Boy, could you imagine that being the definitive play of an overtime loss for you? Just a QB center exchange in the shotgun. It's a wet football. You see the rain coming down. I don't know how clearly in the field we've seen some areas, Daryl, you've pointed out, where it's slippery than others, especially on the outside by the numbers. Second and eight. Only one turnover in the game. Rudolph, sideline throw, and the catch made by Johnson. Deontay Johnson puts a move on. Ball's out. Lions have it. He got inside the 40. The ball back at the 44, and Detroit jumped on it. Amadi Oruwarie. What a great, up with the recovery. What a great job by Mark Gilbert. Don't hang your head because you got beat on that pass. Re-engage, get back into that play. It ends up being Mark Gilbert. Watch him, number 40 on the outside. This is the one who gives up the completion to Deontay Johnson. Great job, great concentration. Just keep hustling. Go get him. Watch, he's going to be the guy that punches it out. Great job. A rookie free agent from Duke. Smart play. And he's only playing because of the injury to Jerry Jacobs at that corner spot. But the takeaway for Detroit at the 45-yard line. And worth pointing out, if you weren't with us earlier, Aaron Glenn, defensive coordinator of the Lions, said, you know, we, after that bad loss to the Eagles, the hard drive, the game tape, they buried it not just for the game, but for the entire first half of their 0-8 season. Literally, physically buried it. Goff. Intercepted with a flag down. That's Minka Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Campbell acting as if he's going to call another play. Prior to the pass, holding defense, five-yard penalty, an automatic first down. That'll wipe out the takeaway. It's been a while for Fitzpatrick. 14 games since he's had an interception. I thought it was on number 55. Yeah. That's Devin Bush. Steeler linebacker. There he is. Yeah. We'll get you a better look. Let me get back after this snap. First down at midfield. DeAndre Swift fighting hard, maybe a yard. So you're trying to get into that middle of the field, that seam route, and you're going to try to get around the linebacker. So there's Devin Bush right there. So he's moving up. TJ Hawkinson, let's see if it's on the outside slip right there. Yep, a little hold. And again, if you know that you've got that safety help over the top, that's okay. You know, you, you got her on the top. And now if you're in man-to-man -man coverage, yeah, go ahead and get yourself a little handful. But he had Minka Fitzpatrick over the top helping him out. Again, Goff earlier looked like his lower back area got hit hard, has hung in there in pain. They've been treating it on the sideline. Has not thrown the ball a lot in this game. Under pressure here. And tipped away. Boy, trying to get the Swift. There's a flag down back at the 40. Personal foul. Rushing the foul for defense number 21. A 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Boy, these are big calls and big moments of big games and for the Lions, nothing bigger. And you'd like to see both teams battle. There's Trey Norwood right there at number 21. He's down low, so he's down around the quarterback's knees. And it's just, it's it's the rule of the law. It's the letter of the law. You get down around those knees. Was he, was he really low and, and barely a, a, a player in that? But it's got to be a forcible ball that, where you're kind of going through that. That was kind of a desperation yeah, lunge at it. That did not look forcible. But it's a call in favor of the Lions. They deserve a break somewhere along the line this year. And on first down, Swift is met hard before he got to the line of scrimmage.
Well, we have seen too many of those kinds of calls. I don't care what team you're rooting for. You just want them to be consistent. And when guys are out there battling, Especially when you're in overtime, you, you, you want it to be one on the field. You don't want the officiating crews to have to play a part. And uh, we, we've seen a couple of really big calls here go against the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. A team who had a lot of calls go for them last Monday night. A narrow escape to keep their winning streak alive when they beat the Bears. That's Hawkinson in motion. The pitch is to Swift. He gets one block. DeAndre Swift shoved back when he got inside the 30. But you're in field goal range. I say that cautiously because Ryan Santosa, who was added this week when Austin Seibert hurt his hip and went out injured. Now, he had played earlier in the year, had a 35-yarder in the final minute against the Ravens for the Lions. In fact, his first pro contract was with Detroit in 2018. Kind of bounced around. For a long time. It's the Lions, they don't play a whole lot, have won here in Pittsburgh. Quick pass to Amon Ross St. Brown on the rookie, short of the first down. Here comes a flag. Looks like a, a hold on the Lions on the run after the catch. At least that's what they're discussing. I tell you, you have a season like this, you just you, you reinvent ways to let games slip through your fingers. Well, the Lions have had holding offense number 88, 10 yard penalty, third down. The Lions have had some just heartbreaking moments. Yeah, TJ Hawkinson's out there arguing. I don't think he has a whole lot to argue about. No. That's a hold right there. <laughs> that uh, is an illustration of a hold. He's had a frustrating day. Keep bringing up the point that he was their leading receiver coming in and has not caught a ball. I guess he's trying to help in the run game. But this really changes things because you're back at the 38-yard line. It would be, if you get nothing, a field goal triumph. A long way for Santoso. 55-56 range. Goff completes... Moving upfield as Khalif Raymond gets some of that yardage back, but it's not going to be a first down. In overtime, timeout called Steelers. A field goal would win it, would give the Lions. Timeout. Pittsburgh, the first of the period. A victory. We'll check the exact spot, but we're looking in the neighborhood of a 48-yard field goal try. On fourth and six, damp conditions to the open end of this stadium that's a little bit more difficult. Gosh, we've seen so many heartbreaking finishes go against the Lions on field goals. Wouldn't oh, it be ironic for them to get it here? 66-yarder with oh, Baltimore that, bounced, that should have never really happened. Minnesota, they, they think they've won the game against Minnesota, and they come down the field in 31 seconds to get the game winner. His career long as a professional, San Ryan Santoso, 35 yards in college at Minnesota, outdoors, it was 52 yards. Are the Lions going to get their first win of 2021? The kick is no good. It's not good. And there's your answer so far. Well, there was a lot of drama for a bad kick. Yeah. I, it, it looks as though somebody deflects it, but it, it gets through clean. He just, he just hit it bad. Didn't slip, snap, hold, everything else looked like it was supposed to. We could still end up at a tie game here. But there's plenty of time. Four minutes, Steelers have a timeout. And good field position. Najee Harris. Next score wins this game. And if there isn't, then we're going to put a tie on the board. Well, that holding penalty hurt. They made up some of that. 
But sometimes you create your own opportunity or put yourself in rough spots. There's the bat snap. We've seen a few of those all day. Harris recovers, brought down way back at the 20 yard line. Well, you pointed it out, Daryl. We have seen four of those at least high snaps that Rudolph has gathered in, and you said you got to be careful. You're playing with fire with a wet football. Yeah, it, uh, at least Mason Rudolph has had the opportunity to make a play on the other ones. This this one just gets right up over the top. He's got no chance on it right there. So, what does this do now? Nick Williams got to Harris, who came up with the recovery, or it could have been disastrous. For the Steelers on third and 26. Time for Rudolph, middle of the field, and juggled and dropped. A chance at an interception at the 45 yard line. Jalen Elliott couldn't hold on. I t I t it's amazing. I I've been through a 1-15 in 15 season, and, and you just week after week, you find ways not to win games. And this is exactly what I'm talking about right here. Jalen Elliott, yeah, it's a deflection. Make the play. There's been so many opportunities during this season for Detroit to make that definitive play, to get that first victory, and they've just never been able to finish it. Presley Harvin, the rookie punter for the Steelers, booms it out of there. It's a liner. Raymond on the fly. At the 30, and up across the 40, near the 45, before he goes out of bounds. And a flag back at the 27-yard line of the Steelers. It's a pretty good return by Raymond. And we'll see with 225 in overtime remaining. 225 in this game remaining. There is no flag on the play. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Last time the Lions won a game, trailed 30-20, late fourth quarter. Matthew Stafford to Marvin Jones with 2.18 left. Lions defense forces a turnover in Barrett's territory. Adrian Peterson scores from the five with a minute 37. Defense stops the Bears' final chance. And the Lions win 34-30. Daryl Bevel's first game as the Lions' interim coach. They have not won since. And the defense of the Steelers comes up big. Terrell Edmonds on a safety blitz. Yeah, this is just a simple blitz by Terrell Edmonds. Don't know why it confused Detroit so much, and he gets a clean run right in. Here he comes, number 34. Jonah Jackson goes down. You've got two guys blocking one. I know. I know. Trust me. Cameron Heyman is a heck of a player, but you don't need two guys on him, especially when you've got a blitzer coming in. Two-minute warning in overtime. Still tied. Whining wangles or flying off today the your customers want it all you have to deal with higher expectations and you have to lower wait times last one with ibm you can do both your business can unify apps and data across your clouds so you can address supply chain issues in real time before they impact your bottom line predicting and managing operational issues that's why so many businesses work with ibm Other delivery apps add surprise fees. It's not cheap. At Domino's, we're giving out surprise freeze instead. Surprise freeze! Surprise what? Freeze with an R. When you order delivery online, you could be surprised with free lava cakes, free stuffed cheesy bread, free pizza, or more. Yes! Check the Domino's tracker to find out. Where are you going to have pizza next time? Domino's! Domino's. That's what I love to hear. Two minutes remaining in overtime. Week 10 in the NFL. Steelers win streak on the line. The Lions losing streak on the line. Big sack puts him back at second and 23. Detroit at the 32-yard line. 
Goff hesitates. Throws and drops. It's a wet football. Swift can't hang on. It's third down. Boy, when Mike Tomlin said we want to go back to old school football, we expect kind of an old school football game. I, I don't think he exactly had this kind of game in mind for either team. Yeah, trying to figure out which school he meant. Uh, school, school of hard knocks. Yeah, right? that's I, I mean, right there, DeAndre Swift. I mean, that is that's it's fundamental football. Don't turn your head upfield to locate where you're going to run the football until you have the football in your hands. A lot on the line of the Lions, but the, the Steelers, they win this game, not only the streak, but they go to the top of the AFC North Division. Browns lost today, and the Ravens lost Thursday night. Bengals are on a bye. Goff throws and almost intercepted, juggling for the football. Trey Norwood, who's come on to play well, the rookie from Oklahoma. There's a flag back at the 25-yard line. Holding. Offense number 32. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. The punting unit comes out for Detroit. Really nice job by Amon Ross St. Brown, number 14 for the Lions. He's going to have to turn into the defender. The ball's underthrown. Trey Norwood in a great position for the interception and battles it out of the way. Jack Fox has been busy. Came in leading the NFL in punting. That's his 10th punt of this game. McLeod can't get away. Smothered around the 22. There's a flag down back at the 35-yard line. I don't know if guys are getting tired or the officials are throwing that flag that it's terrible towels. Now, penalty flags are flying around here. During the kick, during the kick, holding, return team, number 54. 10-yard penalty from where the kick was caught. First down. They call it on Ulysses Gilbert. And on 51, the grab. The punt was 47 yards. That'll back with the penalty. The Steelers deep inside their own territory. They're going to spot this. They're drawing off the football at the 11-yard line. Haven't had a tie this season. And if nobody scores in the next minute 37, we'll have one here. Rudolph, catch made across the 20. Pat Fryermuth with the first down. Rudolph over 200 yards through the air. I'm out. I'm out. Detroit, their first of the half. It'll be 30 seconds late. Lions will have one remaining. Steelers still have a timeout with a minute 30 to go in overtime. The punch out after the catch and the penalty call. Otherwise, that interception would have given the Steelers the ball and then roughing on Goff. Holding pushed them back and they missed the field goal try. Santoso not so on target. And then the high snap, but the Steelers recovered from that with big defense missing. On the interception chance. Yeah, it's just uh, kind of hanging out there. Who wants to win? And we just, we just, you didn't see a whole lot of plays there where one team's trying to grab this victory that's hanging in the balance. So that wrap around Goff, uh, keeping it warm, that midsection is back and hit early in the game. Wide open, but dropped. It's Fryermuth at the 20. And we saw it with DeAndre uh, Swift. And now we get to see it with Fryermuth. You can see right at the last second, turning his head to locate the defender coming up to make the tackle, but he hasn't secured the catch yet. Second down, 10. How aggressive with control of the game because you have the football. Will the Steelers be? It's the four-man rush, and Rudolph, short, catch made. McLeod, a career-high number of catches for him today. Again, usually a returner, but 
more active with his ninth grab because of the injury to Chase Claypool and Juju Smith Schuster has been out the entire season once he went out with his injury. We have a timeout. So Daryl, they're playing this. The Lions say, hey, we get the stop on third down. We'll get one more shot. Yeah. Trying to, to get the the offense the opportunity to, to maybe get a play down the field. You know, some type of Hail Mary situation for a potential field goal attempt again, or maybe a couple into the end zone. On a third down and four. Steelers have one timeout. And they have the kicker who has shown he could hit from long hey, distance in Chris Boswell. Time for Rudolph. The first down is made as Friermuth makes the grab. And the clock continues to run. Detroit cannot stop it. To the line they go at the 35 of Pittsburgh. Threatening blitz. Here they come. Rudolph throws incomplete. 58 seconds remaining in overtime. Well, I, I tell you, Detroit has been aggressive all day long. In, in Aaron Glenn's group, they have brought some pressure. They've put their guys on the outside into some one-on-one -on -one situations. Now they've had six different cornerbacks start this year. Three of them are, have been rookies. They've had some injuries today in the secondary, so they're down again. But he has not backed off of being very aggressive at times, matching up with the Steelers' wide receiver group in one-on-one -on -one situations. Trey Flowers left injured. Tracy Walker in the secondary left injured on that line defense. Rudolph dumps it off short. Eric Ebron leaps in the air. Not sure why. <laughs> Looks like no, nobody was there yet, but he's short of the first down. And we have 45 seconds, 44 counting here. Another 15, 20 yards, and you're going to be in position for a Boswell shot at a field goal. Pressure, Rudolph has to get rid of it. Harris slips some tackles. Najee Harris across midfield and a timeout Steelers. 29 seconds remain. And here's that aggressive look by Detroit. They've, they've showed pressure this time. They back out of it a little bit, play more zone coverage. Harris, four catches, 28 yards, over 100 rushing yards. Touched the ball 30 times. Another game for the rookie, setting rookie Steeler records for running back, scrimmage yards, and a lot more. There's Chris Boswell, who's made eight straight field goals from beyond 50 yards, including a 51-yarder late in this game to get us to a 16-all tie. You see at home... 56 is the longest. His career long anywhere, 59 yards. No timeouts. Incomplete. Looked like Ray Ray McLeod slipped a little bit. I don't know if Rudolph thought he was held, but coming out of his break, it's second and 10, 24 seconds. So you're going to need at least 10 yards. That'll get you a 57-yard try. 15 yards, you're more in that range. And this is the better side, the better end of the stadium, according to the kickers, with the conditions we're facing this afternoon evening. Well protected is Rudolph. Underneath Deontay Johnson. And he can fly if he gets a block. Trying to get out of bounds, and he does. 15 seconds remain. Really nice job by his teammates out there on the field, recognizing that he's coming across the field, trying to get out of bounds, picking up some blocks to allow him to do that. He's going to end up right in the middle of the field. He's going to have a long way to go to get out of bounds. You can see all his players reacting. Najee Harris right there. Here comes Ray Ray McLeod in to help out a little bit. So you're right on that cuffs. Remember we showed you 56 yards. They would need to be at the 38 to really be that, that 56, which is as long here at home. No timeouts. Right now it's a 58-yard try. Catch made. Could he get out of bounds? Ball's out! He caught it and lost it! 
And the Lions are on it. Trey Flowers back in the game after having left injured. Right place, right time. Unbelievable. Does anybody really feels a fumble recovered by the defense? First down, Detroit. Does anybody really want to win this game? What a great job by Will Harris right there. Puts his helmet right on the football. And I don't know, Chris, we showed you that. I don't even want him to call it the high right reel from overtime because a lot of that was mistakes, and we've just continued to see that throughout this entire period where there was a team with an opportunity to win the game, and they would make the critical mistake. Uh, let's see on the recovery, and they are making sure, obviously Booth reviewed that everybody's inbounds on the recovery. He has it, he has it. His rear goes towards the sideline. It's definitely a catch and a fumble. That is clear. Looks clean enough as the recovery, and that's the way it's being ruled at the moment. It could be a game-saving play. And obviously, the mistakes are created. The other guy, the other team has to do their part to force the issue as well. Yeah, but, I mean, are you trying to get something short here and get out of bounds quick? Because I, I don't know if Jared Goff, is, as much as he's been bothered by this hip and back, does he have enough to get it into the end zone right here for any type of Hail Mary? Can they get him a couple yards? You have no timeouts. Middle of the field. You're going to have to pitch it. Benson has it. Somebody needs, well, you're going to end the game. And that's it. And that's how it goes. The Steeler win streak stops. The losing streak for the Lions stops. A tie after overtime, and that's the way it goes into the books. We'll have more from Pittsburgh here in a moment.